Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm back with Lamplight City and I'm gonna pick up where I left off. Enjoy! I'm guessing it's locked, but it probably only contains more art supplies we don't care about. All the tools an artist would ever need, brushes, pieces of canvas, paints. I feel as though this could be relevant, but I can't really see how. Hmm. Where dreams go to die. These aren't half bad. Nice to know the students aren't completely wasting their time here. Well, so much for modesty. Who oh, is it warm in here or is it just me? Excuse me. Yes. Are you Roger DeVay? I am. Miles Fordham, private investigator. I have some questions for you if you aren't too busy. Will this take long? This isn't exactly the best time. It shouldn't, no. All right then, quickly. Do you know Desiree Lathan? Desiree? Yes, of course I know her. What happened to her was just awful. Indeed. My condolences, Mr. DeVay. What can you tell me about her? She was a wonderful woman, sharp, full of life, extremely witty. I only knew her for a short time, but I consider myself lucky to have had her as a friend. How did you two meet? We were introduced at a party and became fast friends. It's hard to believe she's really gone. Do you have any information regarding Desiree's death? No, none at all. It came as a total shock. I heard she was burned to death. Oh. Is that true? It is. It's really just unthinkable. Do you know of anyone who might have wished harm upon her? No. Everyone loved her. To think someone could be capable of doing that to her, it just makes me feel sick. You painted Desiree's portrait, is that right? Yes. I finished it just a few months ago. Do you often do commissioned work? Sometimes, but this wasn't exactly a commission. More like a gift. You mean you weren't paid for it? No, I didn't do it for money. It was an honor just to paint her. I see. And did she like the result? Well, she had it hanging in her bedroom and not in her attic, so I assumed she liked it well enough. It was a rather nice portrait, I must admit. Oh, so you've seen it. Indeed I have. Regrettably, I can't comment on the likeness, never having seen the subject in life. Ah, yes. Well, she used to say that standing in front of it was like looking into a mirror. I tried my best to do her justice. How long have you been teaching at this university? About four years now. And do you also earn money with your painting? Not of late. I haven't sold a painting in some time. But my salary from the university is enough for the time being. Perhaps someday I'll be able to devote the proper focus to my painting. I'll let you get back to your class. Right. All the tools an artist would ever need. Brushes, pieces of canvas, paints. I feel as though this could be relevant, but I can't really see how. Hmm. Where to? These are all high-end foo-foo liqueurs and cordials. You couldn't pay me to drink that rubbish. Well, if no one's cleaned up, you might as well do them the favor. Wait, what? Was I always able to take that? Hmm. Disappeared now. Um, got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. No. That's it for now. Better get back to it then.
Mm. Maybe I missed something. Nothing new to ask him about right now. I'm afraid I need to have another look inside Miss Lathan's room, Officer Kane. All right, but please be quick about it. Oh, Miles, really? You're going to carry the ashes around in a pewter mug? It's vital to the investigation that we find out exactly what happened to the body. If anyone can tell us for certain, it's Dr. Edwards. Fair enough. I suppose this isn't the most unpleasant thing you've carried around before. Remember that time we had to go looking for that murder victim's missing head? I'd really rather not, actually. Hmm. So wait, was I always able to do that? I don't think there's much else we can learn just by looking at these ashes, Miles. Just a pile of ashes. They can't tell us much more than we already know. Nothing else of interest in there. Wait, who am I gonna show this to? Ugh. The smell from the bedroom is getting worse. I don't know how much longer I can stand it. Nothing new to ask him about right now. Who am I going to show it to? Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. It must mean a spirit is oh. trying to make contact. I don't think there's anything she can help with right now. Wait, she said there was a stench? I never much cared for all that mystic stuff. Why should your life be dictated by a bunch of cards? I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. Hmm. Dear Lord, what is that smell? Did you step in something out there, Fordham? Private investigation is a dirty job, Upton. You know that. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Would it be possible for me to access the mortuary? The mortuary? What for? I'd like to consult with Dr. Edwards. All right, but be careful. Make sure you don't let Snelling see you back there. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. Wait, oh, this. Uh, Dr. Edwards' lab was always a fascinating place to learn about death. A bit less so now that I'm quite the expert. Oh, did I miss cleaning up some bit of that last corpse? Oh, Fordham, what brings you down here? Hello, Edwards. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Yes, yes, of course. There's one in a jar over there, and I may have another one around here somewhere. That coroner humor never gets old, does it? Anyway, let me know what you want to discuss. This fellow's not going anywhere. I kind of want to see what other people say about the smell. Hold on. Goodness, what a stench! When did you last wash? Oh, that? No, I've just got these ashes of a burned woman in my coat. I see. I'm sure you've got your reasons for doing so. If you'd ever like to write an article about the experience, I'll be glad to take a look at it. <laughs> I don't think there's really anything else worth asking him about right now. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. Well, she already got... Ah, home at last. Good to see you've made it back in one piece. <laughs> Miles, did you leave the gas on again? No, dear. I've just got some pungent evidence on my person. 
Well, get it out of here before you stink up the place. My plants can only do so much. Oh, Dennis, really? Did you break wind? <laughs> Anyone else left? Oh, that smell! I thought I told Mr. Usher to throw away that sandwich. That's everyone. Assorted lab equipment for setting things on fire or causing explosions. You know, the perfect way to pass the time. You've seen one dissected torso, you've seen them all. I wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. This provides the room with just the right amount of heat. Unlike the incinerators in the crematorium. Talk about overkill. It sure is a lot of rubbish crammed inside our upper bodies, isn't there? I'd say being hooked up to that machine was the worst experience of my life. Except I was already dead at the time. Imagine a giant mosquito sucking out all your blood and then replacing it with formaldehyde. Not very pleasant. Mm. I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection of preserved reproductive organs on this shelf. He must be getting soft in his old age. Or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. <laughs> A fine example of well-developed deltoids, latissimus dorsi, and gluteus maximi. The brain is truly a fascinating organ. If only more people used it. <laughs> it looks rather fresh. There's a plaque at the base of the jar that says H. Putnam. It looks rather... Well, at least he died with a smile on his face. Sort of. Edwards must have some very good friends in the department to have gotten this custom-made table. It does suit the room, though. Assorted lab equipment for setting things on... Mm. Nice pair of legs. <laughs> I'd say being hooked up to that machine was the... Imagine a giant mosquito sucking out all... Edwards keeps assorted bottles and specimens in there. Nothing too remarkable that I can see. Pardon me, Edwards. Yes? I've got these human ashes from a crime scene. Straight to the point. I knew I liked you for a reason, Fordham. Who do they belong to? Desiree Lathan. She was a Gascon Grand Dame. Oh, of course. I heard about that case. She was found burned in her home, wasn't she? That's right. I meant to go over there later today. Well, then I suppose I've saved you the journey. Would you have a look at these? Does this mean you're officially on the case? Not as such. In fact, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention I'd been here. Ah, a clandestine operation. Sneaking around under Snelling's nose. I don't have much of a choice. I'm pretty much persona non grata around here these days. Well, you're always welcome in my mortuary. Preferably while still breathing, of course. Anyway, I'll just take those ashes off your hands. I'm sure your social life will soon improve. Yes, I was making quite the impression. This is an interesting choice of container. It was either that or carry them around in my bare hands. Well, I'm a bit busy right now, but I should have something for you within the next couple of hours. But you do realize the information won't be exclusive to you. I'll have to pass it on to the detectives on the case. Naturally. That just gives me more of an incentive to work quickly. I found this piece of burned cloth at the crime scene. Could you take a look at it for me? This is from the Lathan case? It is, yes. What do you need me to look at exactly? It appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. I'm afraid I have my hands full right now, but you can feel free to use my workbench if you'd like. To do what exactly? Surely they taught you something about basic chemical analysis when you worked here. 
Yes, well, I always let Bill handle the more technical aspects of our cases. A real pity I'm not around to help you anymore, isn't it? But I'll have a look and see if something comes back to me. <laughs> Keeping busy down here, Edwards? Oh, you know me. I've always got my hands in someone. Edwards always did have a way with words. This postmortem was just a formality, really. The victim died of a gunshot wound to the head. Last week, though, we had a real kicker. An old man was brought in, and though he appeared quite dead, I was told that he'd been in a trance for over half a year. Apparently, he was hypnotized right at the point of death, and somehow managed to remain alive in a fashion. In any case, when I began performing the exam, his entire body decayed into a putrefied mess within minutes. It was fascinating. Uh, should you really be giving me these details, Edwards? Oh, hell, I don't mind telling you, Miles. It's not like you're going to go tell Snelling. Besides, you're the only one who's come to see me all week. Dead people make lousy conversationalists. <laughs> hey, I take offense to that statement. So, Snelling got promoted to chief, did he? Yes, not too long after you left. Personally, I think he took advantage of your situation to change things around here. Was it really that much of a shock? Bill and I weren't exactly the most well-liked detectives on the force. But you were respected. You two solved over 350 cases in 15 years. You were an institution. Damn right we were. It's so easy for people to resent their more successful peers. Ah, Edwards. Nice to know someone missed us. You didn't examine Bill after he died, did you? Ha! <laughs> he wishes. No, there was nothing inconclusive about his death. He died from impact after falling from the roof of a building. Why, was there something else I should have looked into? No, I was just curious. As fond as I am of Edwards, it would have been a bit much for him to go poking around my insides. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. <laughs> Wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. I feel sorry for the poor slob who has to clean that out. Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. Oh, it's been ages since we got to do any type of chemical analysis. This will be grand! Dr. Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the Petri dish. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Aha! The oil turned orange. Yes! The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? Quite. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one? Then I suggest going out and looking for more oil samples. Whale oil. Whale oil be damned. Looks like that's not a match. <sighs> oh, you love it. <laughs> so much for kerosene being the culprit. Too bad, I would have bet on it being coal oil. So that's all we have. What's this blue stuff? Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with- This provides the- Okay, so where am I gonna get more oil? I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection, or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. 
I don't think the good doctor has anything else to teach us right now. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. Hmm. Oh wait, maybe the paints. All the tools an artist would ever need. Brushes, pieces of canvas, paints. There's also several jars full of clear liquid. Interesting. Huh. This is linseed oil. It's used as a drying agent for oil paintings. It would be a good idea to take a sample of this, Miles. Especially now that nobody's looking. That has to be it. Now that we've got some linseed oil, it's probably worth testing. Well, I'll be damned. We've got ourselves a match. I wonder if Edwards knows anything pertinent about this stuff. Pardon me, Edwards. Yes. What do you know about linseed oil? It's an oil made from flaxseed that has many uses. Most commonly, it's used to dry things like varnish or oil paints. Some people even eat it for health benefits. I hear it goes well with a bit of quark. And it's flammable? As most oils are, yes. Where are you going with this? The oily residue on that rag is linseed oil. Fascinating. But I found no trace of anything used to light a fire at the crime scene. Uh-oh, he's getting that gleam in his eye. Wait just a moment. Linseed oil? Of course! Anytime linseed oil is used, extreme caution must be taken to dry cure rags that may be soaked in it. That's because when linseed oil dries and oxidizes, it releases heat. A pile of rags soaked in linseed oil in a confined space runs the risk of spontaneously combusting. How long would this take, exactly? A few days, at least. Interesting. It's a rather uncertain means of murder, but it's excellent for appearing accidental. It's certainly not the most far-fetched conclusion you've ever come to. Hmm. Have you had a chance to look at those ashes I gave you? Yes, I have. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can tell you. The victim burned to death at a very high temperature. These ashes are greasy and putrid because of liquefied fat from the body, which burned like a candle. It's quite all right, Edwards. I appreciate the information nonetheless. Well, just so you don't go away empty-handed, have a copy of my report. Maybe it will be of some use. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. That's it for now. Better get back to it, then. Probably best not to disturb his class if you've got nothing new to ask about. But I do. Who am I supposed to talk to about this? Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. I don't think there's anything she can help with right now. Honey, I'm home. You know, I've always wanted to say that. It's always nice to see you walk through that door. Addie? What is it, Miles? I'll let you get back to your book.
Have a lovely day, Addie. Don't work yourself too hard, dear. Almost done. Maybe the attorney? Begging your pardon, sir. Yes? Perhaps Mr. Usher will see me when he sees this. No? Oh, what's that? A report from Dr. Malcolm Edwards, the city coroner, confirming Miss Lathan's untimely demise. Let me see that. Oh my. Wait one moment, would you? <laughs> Pardon? What is the meaning of this? Uh, the gentleman who brought that is a private investigator. He's waiting outside to see you. Send him in, then. You heard him, Mr. Fordham. You may go inside and see Mr. Usher. Thank you kindly. <laughs> So, a private investigator, are you? That's right. Miles Fordham is my name. Jonas Usher, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Pleasure's all mine. So, it would seem that Miss Lathan has shuffled off the mortal coil, as it were. I'm sorry to say that is indeed the case. Please, come in. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. I only ask that you kindly wash your hands in the basin first, and limit what you touch in here. This one seems a bit on edge, doesn't he? Is there anything more boring than books on law? Just reading the titles is making me drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your cooperation. Feels very... pandemic-y. Adds a nice bit of color to the room. Stern-looking lady. Judging by how full these bottles are, Usher doesn't indulge much. What a waste. Adds a nice bit of color to the room. Usher seems to like keeping his guests at a distance. Mr. Usher, I have some questions for you. And hopefully I have your answers. What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? She was a lovely woman. I'm saddened to hear of her unfortunate passing. How long had you been her attorney? She retained me some ten years ago, I believe. That's quite a long time. Yes, I remember I had just gotten over a bout of melancholia, and been able to work in nearly a month. I didn't think I'd make it out of that, but luckily things took a turn for the better. Miss Lathan came to see me, and I've served as her attorney ever since. Would you say Miss Lathan is a wealthy woman? Indeed I would. Her estate is worth a significant sum. Of course, you understand that this is confidential information, so I cannot tell you the exact amount. Yes, of course. Can you think of anyone who may have wanted to harm Miss Lathan? No, I can't. What makes you think that someone actually killed her? It seems the most plausible explanation. Miss Lathan was getting on in years. It's likely she may have developed a case of pneumonia. That's the most common killer of the elderly, you know. I had it when I was younger. Most unpleasant. Constant coughing, spitting up phlegm, rattling in the lungs. Thankfully, I made a full recovery. But supposing that was the cause of death, how would it explain the fact that her body was completely burned? She was a smoker. Perhaps she was having a cigarette when she died and dropped it on the bed, causing it to catch fire. I found no cigarette butts at the crime scene. I'm merely offering my opinion, Mr. Fordham. You can take it or leave it. I think we should leave it. I found this letter in Miss Lathan's bedroom, which mentions that she recently changed her will. Could you tell me a bit more about the circumstances surrounding this change? That's not an uncommon occurrence. People change their wills all the time. Relatives and friends fall in and out of favor constantly. Had Miss Lathan made changes to her will previously? No, this was the first time. What change did she make, exactly? Just a change to her beneficiary. Nothing out of the ordinary. And when did this change occur? 
About four months ago, if I recall correctly. Yes, it was definitely in June, because I'd been in bed with a nasty stomach flu at the end of May. That was no fun, let me tell you. I think I lost nearly six pounds from the constant trips to the WC. Couldn't keep a thing down, and whatever did stay down soon came out the other end, if you get my meaning. I'd say his meaning is regrettably impossible to avoid. Who did Miss Lathan name as her new beneficiary? Mr. Fordham, please! You know I couldn't possibly tell you that. There is such a thing as attorney-client privilege. Do you not find it suspicious, Mr. Usher, that Miss Lathan died under such mysterious circumstances only four months after naming a new beneficiary? You said yourself she was wealthy. Does it not make sense that someone might have wanted her inheritance? I suppose it's not entirely out of the question. Right. So tell me the name of Miss Lathan's beneficiary so I can determine if this was, in fact, a murder. Very well. It was a man named Roger DeVay. Interesting. Do you know him? His name's come up before in my investigation. Do you have his address? Yes, it's 775 Pumblechook Place in Chumley. That'll do nicely. Thank you, Mr. Usher. Hmm. How long have you been practicing law, Mr. Usher? Usher and Price has been operating since 1805. I took over from my father 15 years ago. The stress hasn't helped my heartburn, I can tell you that. Why, just last night I was tossing and turning because I couldn't stand the burning in my throat. That's why I've got these bags under my eyes, you know. Ah, yes. And Mr. Price? He's still here, although I think he'll probably be retiring soon as well. But the law firm has done well over the years, and I have a feeling it'll do even better in the years to come. Oh? Why is that? We're currently beginning a group litigation against Royal Maverick for the Lygia disaster. I'm confident that we'll recover quite a significant sum for the families of those killed. You weren't by chance affected by the disaster, were you? Thankfully, I wasn't, no. Shame. You could have joined the class action and done quite well when we win. You know, I always thought we detectives made our living off human tragedy. <laughs> Mr. Usher, I've noticed from your rules and habits that you seem to have a particular aversion to germs. Why is that, if I may ask? Oh, I've been ill most of my life, Mr. Fordham. I was a sickly child, and unfortunately my condition hasn't improved with age. It's a miracle I'm still alive. That's why I'm so careful about exposing myself to germs. I see. How's my color? Do I look pale to you? Uh, not particularly. I saw myself in the mirror this morning and thought I looked a bit peaked. Also, my leg has been hurting more than usual, which has been cause for concern. Nah, you've really done it, Miles. <clears throat> Yes, well, moving on. Thank you for your help, Mr. Usher. The pleasure is all mine, Mr. Fordham. Hmm. Did Usher give us the wrong address? This should be 775, but there's no building here. Hmm. Hey, that's just like the one we had when I was a boy. <laughs> Good old Rusty. He served us well. Yeah, those aren't half bad. Too bad they aren't finished. Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna be used to keep the fire going. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Is this 775 Pumblechook Place? Yeah, it would be. The building were still here. Oh, I see. Might I ask you a few questions? You can ask. Do you know Roger DeVay? No, of course I know him. He lives here with me. He does? Well, uh, whenever he decides to come home, anyway. Rest of the time, I suspect he finds a way to sleep at his job. Me, I'd do the same, except I can't stand the smell of the horses. I suppose the university would have plenty of places for one to sleep. Oh, so he works at the university, does he? Well, I suppose that makes sense with him always putting on the ears the way he does. Probably best not to mention me to him. He gets real testy when anyone asks about his situation. I'll keep that in mind. Tell me about Roger's artistic pursuits. 
boy, I'm much to tell, really. He used to paint all the time when he had his studio in the building that used to be here. He was good at it, too. Shame nobody ever bought his paintings. All that's left now are those two unfinished ones gonna spike wall there. Why use the rest of his spare canvas to make the tent? How did Roger feel about his paintings not selling? Well, how do you think? Made a matter in the March air. Didn't do a very good job of hiding his displeasure either. Well, he's not around me. He always used to say he'd find some way or another to make the money he deserved. Odd. He told me he was content with the salary he got from his teaching job. <laughs> That's a load of bunkum if I ever heard it. Truth is, old Roger's about as poor as Job's turkey. He'd do anything to make a quick crown. Well, now. That's certainly interesting. Do you know a woman named Desiree Lathan? Nah, I don't know many women. They're not too fond of my company. Well, I don't understand why. I always try to be perfect gentlemen. Guess I just don't got the charm. <clears throat> I've asked Roger to give me a few pointers. He's a big hit with ladies, you know. Is that right? Oh, yeah. He no sooner looks at them than they're falling at his feet. A real natural, that one. Never brings it back here, though. Always winds up staying with him. Getting a free meal and a soft bed out of it. Ah, well, the bohemian lifestyle ain't for everyone. Maybe someday my luck will change. I'm sure it will change the day he decides to take a bath. What's your name, sir? Me? I'm Herman. Herman Shaw. How long have you been living here? Oh, I've been here for ages. Since before the building got condemned and was torn down. They pretty much forced us out, you see, but a couple of us came back and set up here. Seemed like a good idea. I had nowhere else to go. That's not so bad, except for when it rains. And I guess we'll have to bundle up a bit more when it gets cold. But other than that, it's like the place was still standing. There's some of that classic chum ingenuity. Or maybe it's just delusion. What happened to this place? Why was it condemned? The building was old. In a pretty sad state, so the inspectors came by and said it was unfit for living. There was a whole lot of us here. Most were able to pick up and go, but a few of us stayed. Why don't you go to a workhouse? You wouldn't be asking if you'd ever been inside one. It's wall-to-wall -wall people, children crying, sick folk coughing all over you. But there's plenty of that out here, too. Well, sure, but out here, there's freedom. Nobody telling you what to do except the odd copper. Not even many of them in this neighborhood. Besides, this is my home. Just because it's missing a few walls don't mean I ought to abandon it. Hmm. You look somewhat familiar. Didn't I see you protesting outside the Harris Construction Yard? Yeah, I was there. What of it? Were you affected by the Ligia disaster? Well, nobody I know was killed, if that's what you mean. So, why were you protesting the construction of the Lenore? Well, that Devons fella promised he'd buy us a meal if we stood in the crowd. And for a free meal, I'd do just about anything. I thank you for your time. Maybe give us a shilling or two for the trouble? I'll consider it. I used to draw funny pictures of rich people on walls too when I was a kid. Never did a lick of good, but it would always make me feel better. By chum standards, that's practically a four-poster. These aren't in such bad shape, really. As far as the chum goes, this is one of the nicer areas. Excuse me. Yes? Could I ask you a few more questions? Yes, I suppose so. Is it true that Miss Lathan recently changed her will to make you her beneficiary? Yes. You can imagine my surprise. My understanding is she left you quite a significant sum. I don't see how that's any of your business, but yes, she did. I'm very lucky. Oh, I see what you're getting at. You're thinking I killed her for her money, is that it? I never said anything of the sort, Mr. DeBay. 
No, but I can see it in your eyes. Look, Desiree considered me the son she never had, and she was like my second mother. I would never, ever even think of doing something so horrid. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't. I've met your roommate, Herman. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Fordham. I have no roommates. Really? You don't live at 775 Pumblechook Place, in a rather cozy hovel? How dare you, sir! I've done nothing to deserve such insults! I would appreciate it if you took your leave of me now! Herman wasn't kidding about this one being proud. Well, it's fitting that Mr. DeVay is an artist, because I think he's painted us a pretty clear picture of what happened to Ms. Lathan. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. I don't think the good doctor had... Best not to... I don't think this... I don't understand what... Did I mess up? Am I not able to... Nothing new to ask him about right now. Honey, I'm home. Seeing you come home always puts a smile on my face. Addie? What is it, Miles? I'll let you get back to your book. I can't talk to the attorney anymore. Who can I talk to? There's nobody... Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. I don't think there's anything she can help with right now. I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. What am I supposed to do? Mr. DeVay. Leave me alone, Mr. Fordham. I have nothing more to say to you. I'm guessing it's locked. I don't know what to do now. I'm afraid I need to have another look inside Miss Lathan's room, Officer Kane. All right, but please be quick about it. That's a nice portrait of Miss Lathan. The area where the artist... But the date is still legible. The flames must have been fair... Doesn't look as though this fireplace has been used in a long time. I suppose we can rule it out as the source. Just a pile of ashes. They can't tell us much more than we already know. Nothing else of interest in there. I don't understand. What 
Nothing new to ask. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. I'm done with the Lathan case. Oh? What have you got? She was murdered by Roger DeVay, a professor of art at the university, in order to claim her inheritance. DeVay befriended Miss Lathan and even painted her portrait, but his failure to establish a name for himself and earn a living from his art was driving him mad. Miss Lathan cared for him as a son and recently changed her will, naming Roger as her sole beneficiary. Roger knew of this and decided killing Miss Lathan was the best way to solve his financial troubles. And how did he manage to do so? Desiree had given him a key to her apartment. While she was out at the Grand Dame's ball, he entered and left a pile of rags soaked in linseed oil under her bed. She arrived home drunk and passed out, unaware that the rags were growing hotter by the minute. Eventually, the oil burst into flames, burning a rag pile as well as poor Miss Lathan. How awful. Well, I'll certainly pass along the information. What an astounding series of events. Although I'm sorry you won't be able to gloat to Snelling that you solved the case before his detectives did. I can find other means of amusement, I think. Good work, Fordham. As usual, I'll send anything else your way as soon as I get it. Roger DeVay? Yes. What is it? You're under arrest for the murder of Desiree Lathan. Oh. I see. Come with me. We need to ask you some questions at the station. And you up there, make yourself decent, would you? Dearest, I'm back. There you are. I was starting to get worried you wouldn't make it home in time. In time? In time for what? For dinner at the Rutherfords. I told you about it the other night, don't you remember? I'm terribly sorry, dear. It must have slipped my mind. How you haven't yet been presented a prize for Husband of the Year is beyond me. There's still time for you to get ready if you hurry. Why don't we spend a nice quiet evening in together? I'd much prefer that. We've had a quiet evening in every night for the past three weeks. I need to get out of the house. Then go ahead without me. Please give Anne and Joseph my regrets. So you're just going to sit here at home by yourself? I'll probably just catch up on my reading or try and get some sleep. Maybe I'll get around to reading that story in Brentwell's. All right, suit yourself. I shouldn't be home too late, but don't wait up. Have a wonderful time, my love. Ah, alone at last. If only I were. Careful what you wish for, Miles. You just might get it. Seeing as I won't, I think another trip to the Angel's in order. Oh, you gonna break your word in addition to lying? That's bold. Nonsense. I'll be home in no time. It'll just be a quick drink to calm my nerves and get you out of my hair. Uh, I think I need a machete for that fool. Very funny. So. That last case was really something. Classic example of murder for money. Such a shame. Perhaps with Roger in jail, Miss Lathan's riches will go to a more worthy cause. Like feeding the poor. You're not listening to me, are you? Oh, right, you've had two drinks already. Fine, I'll just see myself out. Copper for your thoughts, Miles? Hmm? Oh, I was just thinking about a story I read tonight in Brentwell Magazine. It's called The Dissembling Mechanism. Are you familiar with it? Afraid not. Brentwell isn't really my type of magazine. It isn't mine either, but my wife suggested I read it and it struck a bit of a chord. Go on then. What's it about? The story concerns an inventor, a woman who's the greatest mind of the modern age. In this story, ethericity's been discovered and the inventor understands and uses it in her work. Ah, one of those fantastic speculative stories. Anyway, this inventor spends her time creating mechanical wonders, the likes of which the world has never seen. The inventor has a son whom she loves dearly. One day, he meets a tragic end in a carriage accident. The inventor is devastated. All too common in these types of stories. Yes. Well, as I mentioned before, the inventor is the greatest mind of the modern age. She spends weeks researching a way to bring him back. 
She toils for hours, forgetting to eat, neglecting her duties, forgetting her friends. Finally, she finds a way to repair his broken body with mechanical implants. Once that's done, she harnesses the power of Ethericity and revives him from death. Why would she go and do something like that? Because the inventor's obsession was fueled by love. She cared so much for her lost loved one that she vowed to do everything in her power to save them from death. Unfortunately, things don't go well. The inventor brings her son back, and at first he's confused, wild. With time and patience, she tries to ease him back into the world of the living. But gradually, she comes to realize that this person she's brought back isn't her son. Not as he was, anyway. When she understands what she's done, she flies into a fit of madness, and she kills both her creation and herself. How tragic. She also leaves behind a note which closes off the story. I can still recall the exact words. This dissembling mechanism hath not the vital breath of he whom I loved. It is not him. I have formed but a vain, mocking shadow of what is forever lost. That's one hell of a story, Miles. As I said, it resonated with me quite deeply. Same here. I can tell you, I'm glad that Ethericity crap hasn't been discovered, or else this sort of thing won't just be in stories. You mark my words. Yes, I suppose that's one way of interpreting it. I should probably be getting home. One last gin for the road? Ah, hell, why not? Ugh, it's later than I thought. Addy must be asleep. Miles, I thought you said you were staying in tonight. What happened to you? Uh, nothing. I went out for a bit and lost track of time. Miles, you're dead drunk. No, no, of course I'm not. Don't you dare keep lying to me, Miles. It's obvious. I can smell it on you. But I'm not drunk. I, I only had two, I think. I don't care how many you had. You promised me this wouldn't happen again. Where exactly did you go tonight anyway? I was at the Angel. The Angel? But why would you go there? I suppose I was just trying to relive the old days. So why didn't you tell me you were going? I don't know. I... Miles, this has to stop. First it was that sleep medicine, now you've started to go out drinking yourself into a stupor after you explicitly promised me you wouldn't again. It's clear that you've been keeping something from me, and using drugs and drink as a way to avoid dealing with it. No, really, it's just... No, Miles. I'm tired of the lies. I heard what you said when I came home from my appointment with Mrs. Lefebvre. God forbid Adelaide ever find out about... something. I thought... I wanted to think I'd imagined it, so I let it go. But I've come to realize just how wrong I was. Addie, please. Enough. No more excuses, no more lying. I just want to hear the truth. What is it you're not telling me? I... I can't tell you, Addie. I, I'm sorry, but if I do, you'll never believe me. Do you know what I really don't believe, Miles? The fact that you think it necessary to lie to your own wife. Am I to believe that for all these years you've never felt you could trust me? Of course not. It's just that this is... this is different. A lie is a lie, Miles. And the bottom fact is you've been lying to me for months. Perhaps I was too naive or too distracted to see what was really going on, but you finally opened my eyes. This can't go on. I refuse to let it go on. What? What are you saying? Get out, Miles. And don't come back until you're ready to tell me the truth. Addie, you don't mean that. I do mean it, Miles. I don't care where you spend the night, but it's not going to be here. If you ever decide you want to tell me what's going on, I'll listen. But until then, just go. Take me away from all my troubles 
<laughs> Who in the ether is calling at this time of night? Oh, Miles, please come in. It's so nice to see you outside of work. Oh, I get a hug and a kiss? Is that how it works now? You put up your rough and tough attitude, but I know deep down you're really a kitten. Upton, are you drunk? <laughs> no, of course not. I admit I like to have a glass of wine or six to unwind after work, but I can hold my own. Well, I'm glad you're not, because I am. Wait, what's going on? Is everything all right? No, I'm afraid I've made a mess of things at home. Addie threw me out. Oh, Miles. I'm terribly sorry to hear that. Not as sorry as I am, believe me. What happened? It's really not worth getting into. Let's just say I need to figure some things out about my life. <laughs> Don't we all? Constance, I, I hate to impose, but... Of course you can stay here, Miles, as long as you need to. Thank you. I won't need much space. That chair in the corner should do nicely. Are you sure? You won't be uncomfortable? I've slept in worse places, believe me. All right. Well, I should probably be getting to bed. Early morning tomorrow and all that. Of course. Have a good night, Upton. And thank you again for letting me stay. Not a problem. Good night. Ah, election night. The perfect opportunity to switch out one rich swindler for another. Don't know why you're wasting your time. It's not as though the Prime Minister actually does anything. Hmm. It's oddly quiet in here. Maybe my mustache drawing campaign had an effect after all. Good evening, sir. Are you registered to vote? Yes, I am. Here's my registration card. Very good, Mr. Fordham. You've come at an excellent time. Go ahead and step inside a booth. Take as long as you need. Thank you, young man. All right, I'm going to take a break here. I don't know if I chose the right suspect. That was a little confusing, that ending, but I don't know if I missed something. It was very weird. Um, Alright. So that's Lamplight City. Check it out. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye-bye.